Well, so you know, too, um, yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm recording now, so that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can use 1002 as an example of a okay. item with many, many. Right. <coughs> okay. Items, um, so. So I'm doing a quick movie here uh, with the customer to just review the concept here. And we're going to try, if we have time, to put in the data uh, real quick. So they're saying that their item structure is such that, hey, let me maximize this item screen here. So their item structure is such that um, they have many, most of their items under a main item like this 1002. And then Meredith is just one layer deep under that. It's not colon. It's not colon. Yeah, because your old data had, I think, a different structure than that. So, so for most of the items, they'll have a parent item like this, so that like if you were to open the item, it'll have a sub item of like something like this. And we're going to put the discount schedule into that item for most of the items. So, um, so basically, the idea would be in this item, we'll have a custom item field uh, and we already have it created here called discount schedule and this is where that you know semicolon delimited data will go in with the um, the dollar bracket and the percentage you know whether it's 0.1 or 0.2 uh, you know for 20 percent or 10 percent that's where that data will go for most of the items um, that have a parent item like this above them but uh, and then Meredith you're saying I think it's the RL items right maybe you can take me down to those uh, like, uh, alright I'll just search on that and then uh, so then the, the items that don't have like a, um, a nice and neat like parent item like so this 137 see I don't see I guess that's an exception as well, then, or? So, 1037 is a, it does, is a parent <coughs> item. Um, when you search for RL, it's just going to pull up anything with an Yeah, on. sure. Okay, right. So it's not in order. Right, it's not in order. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah okay. All that have an RL code that don't have a parent item. Okay, so on the invoices will be other items like these that don't have a, a sub item of value populated um, and, and we're going to have a custom item field um, and those will have to probably have a discount schedule populated here and then I think Meredith we're going to have to have a category so I mean we could use the packers but the only problem is is there's multiple packers that I think um, you want grouped together on the invoice for discounting. So, I mean, I'd like to f avoid having lots of data entry, but like, I think instead of having a database that's different than QuickBooks, mm -hmm. you know, uh, it might be difficult to like have five packers somehow grouped as one, unless we had a place to store that, you know. Can we go back to the Packers real quick? Yeah. Uh, wh where do you want to go? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go, okay. okay. Yeah. So this shows you Warehouse Packer right here. Okay. Sure. And okay. So we have Rat. Right. And okay. Rat 2. Right. And Rat 3 and Rat 4 and Rat 5. So in rat, you're saying instead of combining all of those into one, you want to create a new field that just, um, you know, attached to each. Well, I mean, un unless you think there's a strict convention here that, like, we could take, like, take off the dash and the number and use that, but I don't know if that's been the way... Yeah, we won't be able to edit those because this is directly linked to the label program and the way it... <laughs> right, right, right. I think in the way it sends out labels, but if there's some way that you can, you know, create a code where RAT 3, RAT 4, and RAT 5 get grouped right well that's what I'm kind of, that's what I'm kind of saying like um, like I think but then like in these cases here well I mean you know, 
Okay. Equals hamster, you know. Rather just, yeah, I can see your idea for these for these items to have um, an okay. item field where it just says, you know, hamster. Like a category or whatever, or right, a a, category, right. so. All right. I mean, and again, if you change your mind, it's still some time. But like, I think what we're talking about then is, and we can still remove this, but I'm going to just do this for their, you know. So like, so we might have like a category, you know, as a custom field. I hope I spelled. I can't see it very well, but, and then, um, oops. Those are all definitely spiders, and like the snakes are all definitely snakes. There's no variation in the Packer field. Let's t let's take a look at that. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, so you're saying like, go ahead. You can take okay, take me. Take over, me. Let me go over to snake. Sure. Yeah. Well, we wouldn't we wouldn't need a category field for as long as they all have the 037 parent item. Oh, we don't even need that. Okay, super. Because what what we would do is is you know, so the logic that and I'm glad we're kind of covering it, but we would we would say okay, if it has a sub item of field which this oh see now this has like another layer see that's what I'm concerned about this is three layers deep it's um oh yes so yes so on snakes we we break them out by um like here's ball python and there's mm -hmm. ball python well i mean what i what i could still do is have them go to the furthest parent in the item in other words use the data from so even if it's two or three levels deep they're still all under 1037 right and 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 so if we grouped on the invoice by the furthest left hand value mm -hmm. and took the discount schedule out of there does that hold yeah so that would work okay so we can, so as long as they can like what they do is they take the entire item I think there's a way that shows the whole thing concatenated with colons like in the database we would just take the furthest value to the left before the first colon and then look at that as the that that would become our category in in, in a sense right and 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 it would be where they would look for the discount schedule and that's also what they would group by on the invoice and it's also how we would total to calculate whether they're meeting the hundred or the five hundred and then if so how much discount to apply right right okay okay so, so we only need a category for the for the exception don't have that's right that's right um so anyway i'm gonna have to call this person back here but Okay. Um, right. So, like, so what I could have you do is go into these items that do have the the parent that we can use. Uh, you don't have to go into these. You just got to go into the the top level one, which is probably way up. <laughs> and uh, let's see if I can get to that. And for a couple of these. And maybe we can make a dummy invoice if possible. Um, you know, here you wouldn't even need to put a category in because it has this is the parent, and the sub items under it are going to use this as the category. Perfect. And that's the whole reason we we're doing it was to make it easier for data entry. So you wouldn't have to populate that, but you would have to put the discount schedule in, right, to be applied to all of those items that are under that right. zero. 1037. All right, I'm kind of rehashing it here so they can get it with the, um, and then, um, so I think we have it. And then on, on the, again, on the RL, like the, the exception items that don't have a parent sub item of item, you'll have to put a category name in and a discount schedule for probably every one of those items. 
So I I don't know how many of those there are, but I do want to bring up something I just thought of. Okay. <laughs> sure. So yeah, go ahead. Yep. The discounting for um, some of these items, but you know, for snakes is a combined total between snakes, lizards and frogs. So is that gonna pose a problem? Right. So, so is that is is that are, are snakes and frogs? Do they have a a, a parent okay, so above them like that? Let's look, let's look at lizards or frogs. Lizards. I think lizards is under. So we've got yeah. So we've got here's a lizard that. Some of these are single, you know, single items with no parent, and then gecko is considered lizard, and that one, so, so it's kind of a mess, as you can see. Um, gecko is considered a lizard, and here's lizard. Oh, here's here's this one. Yeah, we're just going to have to make sure all of these skews are organized. Yeah, did ge does gecko have multiple layers under it. I can't see the detail as much as you. Uh, does that gecko have a colon after it? It has just one colon. Yeah. Yeah. So th yeah, so those are kind of Right. So those have a parent structure to them. Mm -hmm. Um but wouldn't all the ones that say gecko under it share the same but you're saying you would need to combine them in with other lizards that yeah, so gecko and mm -hmm. lizard is considered lizard. Right, right, right. I see. So you could either like I mean I hate to have too much restructuring, but you can either take away the multi layering of gecko and so that they're just regular items kinda like the other exceptions or you can try to put them under a wizard, um, but we have yeah, to have like you know. Point, you know, changing the skews because we have to change it in two other different systems. So I know, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't, you know, don't want to touch the skews so much. So if I have to go in one by one on these, that's what I'll do. Well, I mean, you know, so the other. I mean, the other solution is that every item can be given a category value. Then we know how to group them, and we know how to total them, but then that, what that forces is in these other items, these ones that have the number as the parent, you'd have to go into every one of them and put the category value in there, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's okay. There's not that many. It's just a page. It's nothing like the snakes or spiders. So, I mean, are, are we concluding that, like, maybe trying to use the parent way is not going to be consistent enough? You know, mm -hmm. that we'll, we'll need to be updating one by one otherwise, correct? Right, right. So, yeah, so I think we, but on lizard, you know, like it'll work for this, these categories of lizards that have been set up under lizard. Right. Um, but gecko will have to go one by one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so as humans, you know, as humans, you know to combine yeah. geckos and lizards, but see, our program wouldn't know that, right? Right, so, so I'll have to go through each skew and make sure that I'm linking it correctly to the right. schedule. Right, and, and that's what I was going to probably just say in general, Meredith, is like if there's items that end up on these invoices that our program doesn't see as having the structure that it, like, was anticipating, then it's going to fail, right? So, right. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, so, anyway. Well, I think you understand it either has to be under a parent item like that, and, and we'll allow it to be under multiple layers, but along, as, as long as the highest level parent has the discount schedule in it, then we can use that as the category as well. And then for ones that, like, you want them to be grouped and summed together, then, they yeah, they have to be under that same 
or else they have to have a category value, right? Mm -hmm. But see, that is an exception where the ones do have a colon and, and multi-layering. Our logic would then look for the discount in the parent item, and it wouldn't find it, right? So, um, okay. uh, well, all right. So, so you'll try to restructure it, okay? And then, yeah. and then, uh, and then the customers. Like, if we want to just quickly, if you want to like open up one of the two types or something that you think. So we so let's open up them as a customer like in the customer center like in other words right and then un under additional info yeah under additional info here then we would just define a new uh, custom item field under the customer you know and then we just call it type and then you'll say use and then OK. And so then you can put a value in there. So for this one, you can use those letters if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then OK. And then um, if you don't mind opening up a distributor type one, I mean, you know, I think we know we're just going to put a D in there, <laughs> you know, but we'll, uh, we'll do it, you know. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Right. And so we'll we'll look for that, and then um, that's for the logic that you said that the discount schedule doesn't. They don't start to even get a discount until they reach like what is it? A thousand dollars for just five hundred for a distributor, and pet stores it's a hundred. Okay. So basically, when they're combining the invoice, they don't even need to apply the discount schedule mm -hmm. if they don't reach those minimums for those two different types of customers. Then. Yes, and while we're on this subject, I just want to show you. But they still have to do the group. They still have to do the grouping and totaling for the invoice. Right. They just wouldn't take off any discount at the end. It does, but like we'd have no way to have to know that with the logic we have right now, then, um, because you ch you just took like items of different types and you want them sort of grouped and totaled together. But like, so we had, so our program is like this machine, and it would have to like know, like it would have to look somewhere and say, okay, these three types of items have to be combined on the invoice for the you know so. Um, so on this one, we could do we could use the parent categories for that. You could say parent category centipede, right? Parent category scorpion, because these ones are organized that way. Well, that would handle keeping them grouped within centipede and within scorp scorpion, but it wouldn't combine centipede with scorpion. It's combine the purchase of all three. Right, but like um, unless we come up with a place to store that but see that 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 would almost be back to the category 
thing again because that's universal, right? So you would have a new field that you can put in for any item, and then that tells us how to group and total and, and discount, you see. Um, so, I mean, it, you know, it, I think what we're trying to do is, you know, remove some of the data entry, but it, the, the items, and there's some logic here that you guys apply as humans that the program wouldn't know where to, you know, that might just be one of many things there that you're going to realize how you guys do it, you know what I mean? Um I don't know. I mean, you know, um, so sort of the revision one of the spec was originally to have a category inside every item and a discount schedule. We were going to have two discount schedules, but I think we can get away with one now. But um, so, I mean, if you want to think about that overnight, I'll still send them this video and try and figure out what we're trying to decide here. But I, I um, see, like, these different types of items that have to be combined then the program has to know how to like correlate them together right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there has to be some sort of trigger well some sort of thing they all have in common right. so that they know to be grouped and totaled by that one thing right um, if we want to use packers and um, then maybe almost have a separate table where like these five packers go together these ten packers go together and then I could do that and we would just store that in like a config file or something for you yeah maybe that would be the best way you know what I mean like um yeah so then that would cover the totaling and the grouping you know we would just have a place where we're time. where yeah. we have it's almost like a table where we look up Here's here's how we group the items, and you can use, you know, these ten packers are together, these six packers together. You know what I mean? Because every mm -hmm. item has a packer, right? Mm -hmm. um, right. And, and then uh, the discount schedule, though, would maybe still have to go into every item. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how many items there are, but. Um, Maybe you could use an import tool to do that, but um, I don't know. Um, you know, there's, I think what we're trying to do is make something that does with a program what you guys are handling as people. So there's a lot of business rules you're applying. Yeah, sure. You know, you're applying some rules here. So, um, but. You know, m maybe, you know, you just need to have some Excel import where you can pull in the discount schedules more quickly and then, you know, um, but, um, yeah, I like the idea of having a table because well, then you're, then you're covering the grouping on the invoice at the same time as the groups that, um, for which the discount applies, right? Right, right. So, um, do, do is it as easy as like you know these ten packers would all use the same discount schedule, and these other five packers would all use the same? Or that's by item, right? So, mm -hmm. you could have different discount schedules. So it just depends. So like. Yeah. Then when you drill down to like um, spiders, scorpions, and tarantulas, I mean, sorry, tarantulas, scorpions, and centipedes, those all have the same. Lizards, snakes, and frogs all have the same. And those, that, those are the categories that have the most items in them, like hundreds. Right, right, right. So, um, yeah, yeah. Like I mean, if, if, if there's a... So if, if there's a way to make a spreadsheet or something that says, you know, for this, for these mm -hmm. far left parent items, they would always be, you know, mm -hmm. totaled together, grouped together. But see, you know, mm -hmm. in other words, if you can't put it in a spreadsheet, then it can't really be nailed down, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like... Uh, 
Well, even if even if like you know, I think what you're fearing is some of them. You have hundreds and hundreds of them. So for those, yeah. it's a shame not to try and use the one zero zero two. If everything under there is going to get grouped together and 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 discounted together, so if there's like five or six of these that we can just take off the table, then you don't have to put everything into those. But like, would they? Would you? But I think in some cases you're saying there's exceptions to that where they might get combined with other items, right? When they're totaled. Yeah, so maybe a, if you can get me a spreadsheet that says, you know, for all anything under the 1002, we're going to probably use this this s discount schedule. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then you know, that and then anything that you can in other words, using it's like the 80/20 rule. Let's get 80% of these off the table. But then, like, there's going to be other ones where you're combining, like, three of them onto the same totaling, right? Like, yes. Do you think you can? Do you think you can try to do a spreadsheet to show me, yes. like that? Yes. And then uh, we'll we'll figure out a way to get that data stored in our program somewhere. Okay. You know, um, and then maybe it can be a CSV file or something that you can maintain if you needed to change it. But like I'm, I try to get stuff into QuickBooks so that you can just maintain it in there, you see. But if that's if that's gonna multiply times a hundred, what you got to do for to maintain this, then um, maybe we need a, an outside little storage table, you know. Mm -hmm. And we're always um, getting new items in too, so it has to be able to, you know, be able to capture anything new that we set up. Right. Right. Well, I mean, that would have worked if we were keeping the data in QuickBooks because then you could just put the discounts in for those new items. But it seems like it's not... Um, I mean, for a lot of the items, I think we can nail it down, but then there's going to be some exceptions, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I would need to know how we can group these for how they'll be totaled together on the invoice, you know, and if there's any right. way to, like, say and they all would have the same discount schedule you know what I mean like so you know and, and so when you're getting a spreadsheet together you don't have to have every item in there you have to have like a representation though that covers every item you know what I mean right like yep. yes, yes. you know like if it has a parent item put that in um, you know we're going to need, you know, they call these business rules, right? Because we're trying to take your business rules and translate them into logic, right? So mm -hmm. So really the only two or the only combined discounting that we have is on the reptiles. You don't need the spreadsheet to have um, the other categories, do you? You kind of just want, what is it that you want for the other, you know, like for mammals? I mean, if there's a way to group them by something, or if you don't mind putting a category and a discount into each one, but we would need to know, how, like, maybe the category would tell us how to group them and total them, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you showed me an example. Yeah, yeah, you see, you, you, right, so I don't want to write, but you showed me kind of some tweener items where they have a parent sub-item of thing, but mm -hmm. they get grouped with other items. Yes, yes, so that's kind of what you want the spreadsheet for, I get it, okay. Yeah, because like there might be four or five items that the main parent item, let's say it's gecko, maybe that gets totaled with snakes or whatever and so yeah. we need to know that th those parents like the far left part under the colon right though th those if those gets totaled together and get to share the same discount schedule maybe the spreadsheet right. needs to indicate that you know but then i think in the exception items that don't have a parent sub item of item i think we could say okay if it's not in the spreadsheet, then that means we're just looking for a category and a discount right. schedule in the item. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. I'll. Uh, okay. Yeah, I can work on that. 
All right, and and I don't mean to put pressure on you. I'm just trying to like we we probably would have this would have hit us either way because if the program yeah. went to run against the invoices, it wouldn't have worked, right? So, um, so. No, I don't. I don't feel the pressure. I just want it. I just want it to be. Yeah. As much as we could do in advance, and I I think part of the problem is our our data wasn't organized. You know, it wasn't set up in the most organized fashion, and we've tried to get better with that, like our SKUs. Right. Um, but. Know, we've been around for 20 years and things have kind of changed over the years um, so with the parent categories so you don't so you're not asking for a total on the spreadsheet like I don't need to list out every skew you no. just want anything you just want anything items. right like so like on any of the ones that are the exception items that don't have yeah. parent items yeah. above them, I don't need that in the spreadsheet because we're going to have to probably put a category yeah. and a discount okay. schedule into those. Mm -hmm. So, but like anything that has a parent item, like a sub item of item, mm -hmm. um, then you can cover those because there's hundreds of them under each one. And so yeah. I would just need, okay, for the 1002s. Zero, zero this is going to be the discount schedule, mm -hmm. you know, and then okay, so uh, it won't be a very big spreadsheet. I could probably just right write it, write that out to you in the body of an email because it's just <clears throat> right three or four different lines underneath the main line. Um, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna need it so that we can translate it over to your QuickBooks and understand. Okay. But yeah, I mean, well, that's the whole idea is it shouldn't be a big spreadsheet because we're trying to like apply as many general rules that will cover this okay. in as simple a way as possible right so okay. um, but I mean um, when I see the spreadsheet I may have questions but I'll, uh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll but yeah you don't need to cover the ones that don't have a parent item because those are gonna be we're gonna go right into the items and we're gonna put a discount and a category in there so okay Perfect. okay all right <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, uh, Hopefully I didn't, you know, interrupt too much on your video. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's what it needed to be. I mean, we, we okay. I'm, I'm glad you, you better, we better probably dig out any of these odd okay. exceptions now because, you know, um, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks, yeah. Steve. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye.